announcement, amen, for our couples banquet. The uh, date on that will be February 13th. At what time? Let's go uh, 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. February 13th at 6 o'clock for our couples banquet. And uh, if you have friends Hallelujah. that are couples, invite them to that banquet. We'll have a special speaker. Not sure what all we're going to have. I know there's going to be plenty of meat and vegetables, and, and uh, there's normally a dessert or two sitting at the table. Uh, we're we're looking at having grilled salmon and uh, and uh, roast, and uh, so uh, if you don't like the fish, you'll get the beef. If you don't like that, you can have the vegetables and uh, we'll do it that way amen and uh, if you don't like that you can just have the dessert yeah. <laughs> <laughs> amen and uh, so we'll do something that, that should be pleasing Romans chapter 10 verse number 14 how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed Hallelujah. how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard. Amen. And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace yes. and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not, have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said... Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. He said the way that faith really comes is by hearing. Hallelujah. I won't be preaching on how beautiful are the feet. I don't have that good looking feet, I can tell you. Hallelujah. And my wife would say, I know my daughter would say amen, but no, yeah. <laughs> But I would like to speak on, uh, on this subject. What have you heard? What have you heard? Amen. Lord Jesus, I pray, O oh God, that as your word is anointed, that same anointing would fall heavy upon us here today, and that you would touch our hearts and our lives, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing in, the word, in honor to the word of God. When we, when we think about uh, the Word of God and how that it is presented, the Bible calls, uh, calls preaching the foolishness of preaching. It doesn't say it's foolish preaching. It says the foolishness of preaching. It seems like he said God chose the foolish things to confound the wise. It wasn't in, in, in foolish not being silly, but foolish being it sounds like it's it's too simple to be able to to be able to do anything. When we look in in our in our lives at the things that God has done, many times uh, for for those that have not come to the knowledge of God, they look at our lives and they say how is it that you can uh, can believe the way that you believe for instance whenever my father uh, had his strokes and uh, and when he had his seizures and uh, and it looked like he was going to die brother Phil remembers him in the nursing home he didn't look too good in that thing did he thought we was going to lose him and uh, and different ones that went up there, they would have thought that my dad was was going to die. The doctors had thought he was going to die, 
and uh, but the Lord worked a miracle, and he's alive because of because of a miracle from God. Now we have been in places uh, at at emergency rooms and so on, where we have told some doctors about what happened to my father, and. I would say it's about a 50-50 thing. About 50% of them say, oh, well, what medicine was he on? You know, they must have had a good doctor. The doctor must have done the work. And, and whenever you say, God did this for us, I don't know how many times I've heard not out of their lips but you can tell by the look on their face uh huh I'm so glad that you believe in that but I'm not going to believe in a miracle from God uh, but I know what God did I know amen that God performed a miracle I I remember whenever we were uh, whenever he was in uh, whenever they told us if you want to see him alive you need to get to Grand Rapids today. And, uh, and I never forget uh, driving probably about 10 to 15 over the speed limit, which is unusual for me. But I was trying to get there, and I didn't want the cops just to stop me and say, you can't drive 100. So I was you know, trying to be semi-safe and, uh, and get there as quick as I could. And uh, for three weeks in a coma, and uh, and then God did the work, and uh, and we watched as God began to do the work in His life, and uh, and when we testify to a believer, the believer many times it develops our faith into believing for the miracle that we need at that moment. This past year, Amen. Uh, Sister Krupp called us. Uh, on that one evening, uh, late evening, and she and uh, and my wife, uh, I misunderstood her, and she said, she said, I think that she said, Brother Krupp has fallen down the steps, and and I was praying all the way there for Brother Krupp, and uh, come to find out it was Michael Krupp. Thank God he understands names better than what I do. And, uh, and, and whenever we went in, I'll never forget whenever we, uh, whenever the doctor more or less was asking for the decision to be made as to uh, the life support system. Should we or shouldn't we do the life support system? And I remember the turmoil that was in the family, and I'm not trying to... Uh, but it was, a, it was a, a decision that we all, you know, we were troubled by it because the reason they were pushing that, you know, was because they were afraid he may pass away. And they did not want to resuscitate him if, he didn't, if they didn't want him to be resuscitated. And the turmoil was there because in all of our minds, in the natural all we could see was a funeral. But God saw beyond a funeral. And God said, hallelujah, in my time, there's going to be some miracles that's going to happen. And, uh, and whenever they began to list off everything that would be wrong, even if he lived, uh, it, there were some terrible things. I uh, I wish now that we would have recorded everything they said that could go wrong because it went right. But it's a developer of faith because whenever whenever somebody else maybe they not, may may not fall down the stairs, but whenever they are facing a trial in their life, they say, "I know what God did for them." And I know what God's going to do for me. Whenever I, I remember whenever we were in Bible college, and, uh, and I didn't have uh, uh, money to pay attention, and uh, all of my suits were dirty. 
and I was borrowing one of my, I was borrowing two of my friend's suits till I could get the money to pay for mine, uh, get cleaned. And, uh, and I felt like in my prayer service, the Lord told me, he said, you need to go uh, take those suits to the dry cleaners and get them cleaned. And, and so I, I bummed a ride down to the dry cleaners to get the suits dry cleaned. And, uh, and I didn't have a job that was consistent enough to give me the money to take care of it. And whenever, and whenever I went in, uh, the lady behind the counter said, when do you want them back? And in my prompting, I felt like the Lord said, you tell her Monday. Well, that would not be the right day for me to get a paycheck. My day for getting a paycheck was on Tuesday. And, uh, and, and, but I blurted out, I'll be back Monday to pick them up. I didn't know where the money was going to come from. I didn't have any money. And, uh, but I felt like the Lord, and, and the minute I walked out, the old flesh started working on me, and it said, uh-huh, you just made up a date, and you're not going to be in there at this Tuesday for sure, and it might be next Tuesday before you can get them, or the following. You just, you just bought yourself just a few minutes of time. You're not going to be there. And, but I felt in my spirit that there was something that, was, that God was going to provide for me, and, uh, and on that Monday, uh, there was, uh, they asked me to speak at the chapel service and, uh, and, and just to give a little testimony. And I told them how that it was my senior year in Bible college that year. And I told them, I said, in that, in that uh, setting, I said, look, guys, there's one lesson that I've learned. I didn't tell them that I was broke. I just said, there's one lesson that I've learned. God will always take care of your needs. If you'll trust him, God will always take care of your needs. I got done, and whenever I finished, one of the fellows came up to me, and he said, I don't know if you remember this, but last fall, <laughs> I bought some books from you, and I didn't pay for them. And here's the money. And, uh, and, and uh, I looked. And then I asked, and I didn't even, and I didn't even think about it. I, I said, oh, good, I've got some suits. And then the Lord spoke to me as I was coming out of the dry cleaners. And they said, uh, and the Lord said, it's Monday, and you're getting your suits. Well, it was God's way of developing my faith. It might have been only a $50 at that time, but whenever I needed hundreds of dollars, I have watched as God has provided for me, and I've stood back in awe and say, how did that happen? There's no way that that was supposed to happen, but God has a way of providing the financial needs. Amen. I've watched him do it too many times for me to say that he can't. Amen. So, so my faith is developed uh, by what I have experienced and it develops faith in others whenever they hear me say, look at what God has done for me. I think one of the reasons I could step in faith is because I grew up in a home that was filled with, we don't know how much money's going to be on this check, and, uh, and there's not enough to get the groceries, and a truck backing up with a, with a, with a truckload of groceries coming into the house. I've seen that. But, and so it developed my faith into believing that God can do whatever we need him to do. Faith cometh by hearing. Amen. And, uh, and so, uh, the, so he said there has to be a preacher, amen, that, uh, that would develop the faith. And, uh, and so as I begin to look in Scripture, and it's a simple, simple little message that we have here, but in... Uh, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 4, Moses makes this statement. For ask now of the things that are past, which were before thee since the, since the day that God created man upon the earth. Ask from one side of heaven unto the other, whether there hath been any such thing as this great thing is, or hath been heard like it. Did ever people 
hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire as thou hast heard and live? Or has there ever hath God assayed to go and take him a nation from the midst of another nation by temptations, by signs, by wonders, by war, and by a mighty hand, and a stretched out arm, by great terrors, according to all, the, all that the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes. Unto thee it was showed that you mightest know that the Lord, he is God, there is none else beside him. He said, so what he was saying was, if you ask anywhere in the world, there's never been a time when, uh, up to this time when God spoke to a nation, amen, through a fire and spoke so that everybody could hear the voice of God. There's never been a time when God has taken a nation and delivered them with a mighty hand. He said, you, you hadn't heard of it before, but now that you have heard of it, you understand that if God, amen, will speak to you, and if God will take you out, there's greater things that God has in store for you. When we step over to the story of Gideon, you'll hear Gideon say these words to the angel. He said, the angel said, Thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said, I ha he said, where, basically, where is God? I have heard what God did in Moses' day, but it hasn't happened in my day. In other words, I, I want to know that what happened then can still happen today. Amen. And God said, go in this thy might. If you can believe me that I did that for Moses, I can do it and will do it for you. If you can depend upon what you have heard that I did for Moses in the hearing of what has been transferred from generation to generation, if you can hear that, amen, and understand that God is no respecter of persons. And believe me, I can give to you, hallelujah, the miracle that you need. Amen. And 300 men with pitchers and, and, uh, and lamps and, uh, and, and with trumpets would stand on top of the hills surrounding the enemy that outnumbered them Amen. Hundreds to one. Amen. And God created a victory. God gave them a victory. But I believe that the victory started, amen, with, with, uh, with, uh, with him saying, amen, God, I heard what Dad said. And I've heard what Grandpa said. And I've heard what other generations have said that you did in another generation. And can you do it today? And God said, because you've heard it, hallelujah, that's your strength. Amen. That's where you have your power. That's where you have your source of strength is in believing that I'm able still to do great things. <coughs> when David spoke, amen, in his prayer, and I believe it's Chronicles, uh, first book, uh, toward the ending of the book, in his prayer, he again makes a statement. He said, we heard what you did to Moses and for Moses. We heard how you brought them through the Red Sea. We heard how that you provided. We heard about that. They had never seen the Red Sea parted. They had never seen the manna in the wilderness. But, Mo but David said, just because I've heard it, I believe that God, hallelujah, is able to reach into my generation and he's able to help me in my circumstance. Hallelujah. He's able, amen, to touch my life just because it was something, amen, that I heard. I step from that passage of Scripture into uh, Mark chapter number 2. Amen. And uh, we mentioned this in our... Uh, in, in our first message, 
But I like to read from it for just a moment. And when they, in Mark 2 and verse number 4, when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Amen. There were certain there that were doubting. Amen. And Jesus said unto them in verse number 8 and 9, He said, Why do you reason these things in your heart? Is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee? Or to say, Arise, take up thy bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man hath power to for, on earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into the house. Immediately he arose and took up the bed and went forth uh, uh, for before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. In other words, we've known that God can do great things. But we have never heard of anything like this before. We've never known that God could step into this realm. Now we understand that God has the power upon earth to forgive sins. Now we know, hallelujah, that a man of palsy can be, amen, can be healed by the power of God. Amen. We may not have known it before we came into the place where Jesus was, but because we have got here, we have seen and we have heard what God can do, and we believe that He is able to do more than what we've ever seen Him do before. Amen. Brother... Uh, uh, Brother Babcock tells me one of his favorite stories, amen, is the woman with the issue of blood, amen. The Bible said, amen, but when she heard of Jesus, hallelujah, but when she heard of Jesus, she had never heard, amen, that he could heal an issue of blood, but she had heard that he could heal. And then she said, I've got to get to this one called Jesus. Blind Bartimaeus, amen, had heard about Jesus before, amen, Jesus ever came his way. But the day that Jesus came his way, who is it coming my way? And blind Bartimaeus, when he heard that Jesus was coming, amen, he began to call out, Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. Why did he call out? Because he understood. Amen. I know that this one called Jesus has healed other sicknesses and other diseases. I don't know exactly all that he can do, but I believe, hallelujah, that he can heal my blindness because he's done things for others before. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. When we read in... I believe it's John, cha John chapter number 9. John chapter number 9, as, as Jesus, amen, healed the blind man, the other blind, one of the other ones, we hear the blind man making this statement. He said in John chapter 9 and verse number 30, the man answered and said unto them, Why, herein is a marvelous thing that you have not known, not that you know not from whence he is, and yet, you, and yet he hath opened mine eyes. We know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man, amen, opened the eyes of one that was born blind? He said, look, all I've ever heard from the time I was an infant is I am blind and I will always be blind. I can never receive my sight because it's impossible for a blind man to ever see. That's what I've heard from the time I was an infant. 
It's never happened before. It's something that is impossible. It's something that I've heard from the time I was an infant. I'll never be healed of my, of my blindness. But now I know differently. And I can tell others that are blind. Amen. Jesus can touch you because he touched me. Hallelujah. I can tell them it's not impossible. There's a miracle for you. There's something great that God wants to do in your life. God wants to heal you. He did it for me. He can do it for you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember when my uh, grandfather, amen, and grandmother were uh, testifying about how grandma had been I went to the doctor to uh, be tested uh, to see if she still had cancer in her body. And, uh, and uh, Dad, Grandpa said, we stood in a room, amen, with, with, uh, that was full of people that were uh, getting themselves examined for their cancers. Some of them in the last stages of cancer. And he said, I heard, amen, the doctor say, Go home. You're free. Hallelujah. <laughs> no medication. And God, amen, healed my grandmother of cancer. Now, I know what the doctors, especially during that time in history, said. They said, uh, Cancer? Oh, I'm sorry. You know? I remember whenever we were in, whenever we were in Minot and, and, uh, and Dad, I don't remember the phone call, but Dad got a phone call from, from one of the saints in the church. And they, and they said, my wife just found out that she has cancer. And, uh, and they went to the church, I believe it was that night, and uh, they joined the church together in prayer. And the church prayed for Sister Corner. And, uh, and she went in for testing, I believe it was the next day or two. And, uh, and in one week, God instantly healed that woman. And uh, in the one test, she, she didn't tell him, but she tape recorded the, the specialist on the phone and she said, so tell me about what happened. And he said, he, he said, uh, I'm not exactly sure, but in your first x-ray, there definitely is an abnormality and it looks to me like cancer. In the second, everything is normal and there is no cancer. She said, would that be a miracle? And he said, did you take any medicine? In one week. <laughs> In two days. And uh, I remember as they played that, amen, from the pulpit, they, were, they had that little tape recorder, and Dad had the microphone to us so we could all hear what the doctor was saying. And I remember the rejoicing. I mean, I was a kid, but I remember the rejoicing because God healed her of the cancer. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. So whenever cancer comes our way, we can say, I heard that Jesus still is in the still has the power to heal cancer. It's not too hard for him. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, and so uh, so we we believe because we know what he can do. When Isaiah spoke in Isaiah 53 and verse number 1, he made this statement, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? He said, He shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form, no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. But he makes his statement first. I need to find somebody that will believe 
what I'm speaking? Will they listen to what's being, uh, what's being said? If they will hear, they can receive the miracle that God wants for them. If they will believe, they can receive their salvation. If they will believe, he was wounded for their transgression, bruised for our iniquity. Chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Oh, hallelujah. If you can believe that, hallelujah, what you hear, amen, amen, can be a result in what you experience. What have you heard today? Have you heard he's still the healer? Have you heard he's still the Savior? Have you heard that he's still the mighty God? Have you heard he's still the everlasting Father? Have you heard that he's still concerned about you? Have you heard, oh hallelujah, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Lo, he's with you always, even to the end of the age. Have you heard that he wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost? Have you heard that he's concerned about you? Hallelujah. He's more concerned about you than he is about a sparrow that falls, but he knows every sparrow that falls, and he's concerned about you today. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. What have you heard? Have you heard that he's still, amen, in the business of coming to seek and to say that which was lost? Have you heard, hallelujah, that he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh? Have you heard he's still a great and a mighty God? Hallelujah. What have you heard? Hallelujah. Amen. In Acts chapter number 19, amen, Paul Amen. Begin to speak in Acts 19 and verse number 1 and said it came to pass that while Apollos was in Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? He said, I see faith involved, is involved in your life. You are a believer in the things of God. He said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. He said, they said, we haven't heard about the Holy Ghost. Paul said, good, because I'm fixing to tell you about the Holy Ghost. Because if you can ever hear about it, amen, the way that you're believing right now, hallelujah, just somehow know that God is going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. If you ever hear about it, God can fill you with the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And so while he spoke to them, he said, he, he said, under what, uh, under what then were you baptized? They said, under John's baptism. He said, then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that he should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ. And when they heard this, Oh, hallelujah. When they just heard about baptism, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And because they had heard about baptism in Jesus' name, when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Just, just hearing something just kind of makes a change in you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm thinking about the time, and I, and I don't recall the, 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 the healing that took place, but uh, I remember the time whenever Paul, amen, was speaking, and he looked at a man that was sick, and, uh, and while he was speaking, and he, and, and he spoke, and, uh, and when he spoke, uh, there was a healing that took place just at that moment. What was happening? I'll tell you what was happening. Amen. The man was hearing the Word of God. And he saw, he said, I see that he has the faith right now to believe God that there's going to be a miracle. What have you heard? Hallelujah. Have you heard that your family can be saved? Have you heard that, amen, that the impossible is, is not impossible with God? Have you heard that there's nothing that is too hard for God? Have you heard, hallelujah, 
Amen. That there, there is a God that wants to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. Have you heard, hallelujah, that there is so much power that God has that we'd never be able to contain the power of God? Hallelujah. Amen. And then, uh, and then I read in Ephesians. Actually, that was the one we just quoted. I go to, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. I don't know if you've heard of it before, but in 1 Corinthians 2, verse number 9, as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. I know that I've talked, we, we've, we've preached about streets of gold and walls of jasper and gates of pearl. We've talked about a river of life. We've talked about the things that we read in the scripture. But when I read this passage of scripture, the Bible tells me that my eyes have never seen the things that God has prepared. I've seen some pretty phenomenal things in God. I've seen some services that lasted almost all night long. And my eyes have not even begun to tap into what he has in store. I've heard some awesome things. I've, uh, I've heard phenomenal messages. I've watched as God has operated in, uh, in, in, in music in some phenomenal ways. And, and the anointing and presence of God is, has swept across an auditorium. I've watched that. I've heard some phenomenal things. I felt his presence. I know that, amen, there's some great things that God has done. But the writer said, the eye has not seen and the ear has not heard. He said, you hadn't even put it into your heart, the things that God has prepared for them. There's no way that you can comprehend. He said, there's some things out there that you haven't even begun to imagine. So, John, so Moses started off the journey with saying, he spoke to you and he brought you out of darkness, out of Egypt and into a promised land. Gideon said, I think that he can fight a battle. David said, I'll serve him because I've heard it from another generation. A blind man said, I can be healed because I've heard that he can heal. A woman with an issue of blood said, I believe that she can do this work for me. Hallelujah. Amen. And they watched as God performed the impossible in their life. When they, when they say she spent all that she had and didn't get any better. Amen. It kind of reminds me of the social health system today. You know, I spend, spend all I have and I'm not even sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but, but I have a God that I have watched as he has performed the miraculous for us. What have you heard? Put your mind into the Word of God and watch what God can do. I believe that this year, and I, and, and, and I know I, I've kind of hit it, hit it from the beginning of the year, but I'm, I, you won't hear it a lot from me because I believe that this is going to be the greatest year that we ever see. I believe that this is going to be our greatest year. I, I, I believe it on my heart. I believe that this year is going to be a, a year of the miraculous. I believe we're going to see folks on this side of the church that have never come to church before. I'm not talking one or two. I'm believing God for something great. I, I'm, I'm believing the waters of baptism will be troubled more than one time. I'm believing, hallelujah. 
Amen. I'm going to put some people down in Jesus' name. and They're going to have their sins remitted. I'm believing that these altars are going to be filled with, a, with people that are hungry for the Holy Ghost. And uh, before I can ever lay my hands on them to pray that they receive the Holy Ghost, they're going to be speaking in tongues. I'm believing that there's going to be people during the song service that's going to lift their hands. I believe that. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Unto him that is able. Now, now stay with me. Unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. I have thought and I believe that the church is going to be full. But unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I could ask or think. I've thought some great things. But he's able to do greater things than what I've ever been able to comprehend. Oh hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know how it's going to happen. But I know that God's got some great things in store. I'm believing Him for that. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to feed my mind on the things that I have heard. I'm going to feed my mind. God's bigger than any problem. God's bigger than any, any sickness. God's bigger than any, hallelujah, any can't. He can do all things. He can fight my battle. He will give me victory. Hallelujah. I am an overcomer. Hallelujah. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. With God, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Hallelujah. I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. I'm going to hear what he has to say. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's stand together tonight, today. Amen. In the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm believing that God is going to do great things in our lives today. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I know that Cece is coming up to be prayed for. And, we are, and, uh, and she asked if they could be prayed for uh, like we prayed for every family so far. And if they would come up for that. But I believe that God is able to do greater things for all of us. Hallelujah. Let this be the year of the miraculous. Let this be your year for whenever, whatever the doctor has said, let it be your year for a miracle. I, I believe that there's nothing too hard for God. My, my sister has back problems and she's going in for an MRI. I believe that God is able to heal her. Sister Suzette hasn't, hasn't got a complete healing yet. And she needs a, a miracle. I believe that this year can be the year for her miracle. I, I, I'm sorry, but I just feel like stepping out in faith. We haven't seen, we haven't seen the Krupp family in church in a long time. I'm believing God. I, I, this isn't emotions, what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about, I, I haven't seen Sister Robertson's daughters in this church in a long time and they're here in town and I believe that God has them for us I, I believe that brother Reggie needs a Holy Ghost and I believe this is his year hallelujah brother Terry I, I don't know whether he got it or not amen he said years ago if I did and I believe that if he has it he can pray back through the Holy Ghost this year amen I'm believing that if there's those that haven't been baptized in Jesus' name that are coming, I'm believing that this year's going to be the year. I'm believing God for some great things. Amen. I don't want to apologize because this is, I, 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 I'm stepping around. I, I want to hear it for myself. Hallelujah. I really believe it would be in the will of God for us to see three people per pew, an average of three people per pew. That'd be, uh, let's see, I think it was 80, 81 or 82, an average by, by December. I believe that that's possible. I believe there's some great things that God has for us if we'll step into the realm of hearing what the preacher, not me, but what the preacher has to say. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, we love you today. Hallelujah. Let's worship him. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I worship you, oh God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for your promises.
I thank you for the miracles that you're going to give us this year. I thank you for the revival that you have promised us. I thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in our lives. I magnify you. I glorify your name, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. I love you, Lord. I thank you for the Bible studies that I have not yet even begun to teach. I thank you for the first one that I get to see baptized in Jesus' name out of a Bible study that I've taught. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah for the Bible studies you're going to give to this church. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah for the Holy Ghost you're going to pour out. I thank you, God. Hallelujah for the men's, for the men's prayer breakfast that's going to break out into a revival. I thank you for the ladies' meetings. There are going to be folks that come for the very first time that's going to receive the Holy Ghost in a ladies' meeting. I thank you, God, for a Tuesday night prayer meeting with revival. Hallelujah. And folks getting the Holy Ghost. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah for what you're going to do. I thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus.